Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is for you. Uh, today for me, it is Thursday the 28th of February 2019. Uh, March tomorrow, where is the year going? It's ridiculous. Um, and here we are, part 10 of the uh, of the build on Monty's Humber. Um, I've done a little bit off the camera, which I'll show you now, but only a tiny little bit because I wasn't sure it was going to work. Um, so I'll explain what I've done and go through it. You'll also see I've tried to slice the end of my thumb off. Yes, I have literally tried to slice the end of my thumb off. I went in that way with a Stanley knife blade. I was cutting some plastic pipe. Um, you can imagine end on plastic pipe, cutting it like that. The blade came, I don't know how, but the blade came out of the knife and then I slipped. And because the blade came out of the knife, it stuck into the plastic and I, th I thrust my thumb into it. Yeah, I can hear you cringing now. By God, did I scream. And um, luckily, I mean, if it had been further up, I would have been in hospital. But it's just sort of tried to slice a, a scallop off of my thumb. So hopefully it's all going to heal and be all right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do any modelling with this. So it may just be reviews for a couple of days. Anyway, let's see how we get on. Um, so... Uh, as you know, the floor pan's all done. So the interior, when I left you last time, I was looking at the instrument gauges. And if you remember, I put the um, the uh, clear fix in there, the humble clear fix, and uh, let that go around. And then it sort of started to dry to a funny finish, and it, it looked awful. It was all sort of wrinkly. I don't know if the bottle's gone off or if that's what it does or, or what, I don't know. Um, I was going to use this, which I recently bought, Contact to Clear, but it's too thin. It won't um, it won't go across the larger hole. It'll probably be around like a two millimeter hole, but it wouldn't go across the, the hole. So what I did then was painted the back of the um, painted the back of the clear fix black uh, with some um, Tamiya acrylic. Um, so then I had a black sort of backing to it with a horrible finish on the front. So I thought, well, that's no good. So I gave it a thick coat of um, satin varnish to sort of try and give it some sort of a base. Then I got some decals from um, an air scale uh, deca uh, uh, aircraft instrument panel set. Um, air scale of the company that make all your um, sets and everything. Here's one here. This is the air scale uh, instrument panel upgrade for the B24 Liberator. I should be doing a review on later on. We can see that's a, a lovely looking set. Um, but they also do just a set of decals for instruments. So um borrowed a couple of them, couldn't find any quite big enough, so put them in and then topped it off with a drop of this, which gives it a look of glass on the top. So just to recap, we've got the Humbrol Clear Fix in there, gone off for a couple of days, painted the back of that black uh, with um, Tammy Acrylic Matte Black, then gave it a coat of um, semi-gloss varnish to sort of try and give it something a bit harder to because the the clear fix is quite soft and then put the decal on let that go off and then a drop of the contact to clear and that's how it looks so there we go you can see in there we've got some what looks like gauges they're a bit small as i said but um they're there and uh yeah not too bad at all so um i think this has made all the difference having this on the top it's really good stuff actually so yeah they look lovely now um so this needs a wash now with some uh, oils which i'll show you how to do and uh the other thing i've done is painted the gear stick and the handbrake now in the instructions if you remember it called out for them to be silver and i didn't quite agree but i can't find any pictures of the interior of one of these so i've gone with silver which is what they said and then on the end of there we've got the the, the shiny black knob on the end of the gear stick and the way to do that for you youngsters out there beginners should i say um <coughs> excuse me get a get a bottle of um gloss black paint wherever your favorite manufacturer is shake it up so you've got some paint in the lid and then literally all i do is just dip the end of the stick into the gloss paint and now you've got a ball a ball of black paint on the end which is nice and shiny that's it it's that simple um Rather than try and get a neat line with a brush and everything, just dip it in and that's it, job done. Okay guys, let's talk about washes. Um, it's a very, very big subject. There's a lot about it on YouTube. There's some people that disagree with others and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
I'm going to basically give you a brief overview of everything I know about washes. And this is basically my opinion. Oh, I've put a glove on because of my cut thumb and the bandage looking a bit there. Yeah. Um, so basically a wash, the, the idea of a wash is to accentuate detail. That's all it does. Um, so if you have, say, like a radiator grill here, if this was painted green, if I wanted to accentuate the, to make it look deeper, like it was a grill and not just a green painted piece of plastic, I'd put a wash on there. The wash would run into all the grooves and leave the green paint showing over the top. The other way you could do it is put some thin matte black paint on there and then wipe it over the cotton bud and that would leave the paint down in the recesses. Um, but a wash is, is simple. Now, washes, there's loads of different ones. First of all, you've got your washes you can buy in a jar. Um, this is an AK enamel wash. This comes from, you can buy these sets. This is a set here and we get rain marks, filter and wash. Now, filters are not to be confused with washes. Basically, as a filter is an all over thing you brush on and it kind of my best description of what it does, if you've got, say, a tricolour camouflage tank and you put this brown filter on it, it kind of blends it in. It's amazing. It looks, it, make, it makes the the surface look like it was printed rather than painted. I, I, can, I find it very difficult to describe, but it's, um, it's awesome. I've just put a filter on these seats and you probably can't really see a difference. But if you look down in this corner, you can see where it's kind of sat in there in that ed in the edges and I'm going to put a wash on them in a minute and that'll um, sort of bring it out a bit more as well but um yeah a, a filter is a sort of an all over now some people um just brush washes all over some people use inks um some people use these this is the Flory um pro modeler wash or Flory wash I think it's called now you can see I bought this in February 2011 so it's eight years old now the beauty of this stuff is it's got many advantages. Um, it's got only one disadvantage. Well, only two disadvantages. One is it's quite sensitive. If you use a brush that has previously had acrylic on it and it's not quite clean, it will destroy it. It turns it to a granular mess. Uh, basically, this is clay suspended in solution. So if you if you upset that solution the clay breaks up almost like when milk's gone off it you, you see the bits floating in the top of your coffee it's like that so it does go off um these just last forever as long as they don't leak um the other disadvantage to it is it's not very hard wearing which is an advantage in that what you do like on an aircraft wing you brush it all over if you go back to my spitfire build you'll see it on there you brush it on wipe it off um, if you want a, uh, uh, if you want it to give you a very dirty sort of grimy look, you brush it onto mate, matte paint and then rub it off, and it, it sort of stains the paint. If you just want to pick up panel lines and recesses and stuff like a normal wash would, you give it a gloss varnish and then wipe it off, and obviously it comes off of the the flat glossy surfaces a lot easier than it would the matte. The other thing you can do is use some oils where you can make your own washes. I've got a brown and a black here. Um, so you can take some of this and mix it up with some low odor thinners or odorless thinners. Do not use turpentine, okay? Especially on tracks. You know you get the tracks where you glue them together piece by piece or Lincoln link, link and length. Do not use turpentine. It will destroy the plastic, particularly Bandai. Bandai plastic doesn't like it. It literally crumbles like Kendall mint cake. Um, so be very, very careful. If it's got a good cut of paint on it, you should be okay. But remember that where the glue is, there's no paint. And it, I've actually, on a Matilda I built, a Tamiya Matilda, I put some, um, I used ordinary enamel thinners, I think. I think it was. Um, and and it just literally just fell apart. They, they just fell to pieces. It attacked the glue joints and that was that. The other thing you can use is lighter fluid. Um, but it's very flammable uh, and it dries very very quickly That's a positive in that it dries fast. This stuff takes quite a while to dry But the problem is you can get tide marks with it if it dries fast So, you know be a little bit careful of that using lighter fluid on tracks is a really good idea because it doesn't attack them and it dries fast um, So what I'm gonna do 
I'm going to show you using a combination of all three. Now, if you see I've got a brush here, Flory Wash written on it. I keep this brush for Flory Wash only and never use it in anything else. I don't wash it in anything. I don't put it in any acrylic thinners. I don't use it for any paint. All it ever sees is Flory Wash and a cloth. That's it. So if I just show you how this stuff works, well, in fact, I won't do that first. I'll do it after. No, I will do it first because if I do it afterwards and I've got something else on it, I might contaminate it. So I'll show you how this works. So I just put the brush in. Yeah, and it's, you can see I've been shaking it so it's all foamed up on the top. Um, and just checking on a piece of cloth that it's not, the brush isn't flooded. And then I can just, how can I get this so you can see what I'm doing? Get some better light for you. I can just brush it on like so, and it'll go into all the nooks and crannies. And just brush it all over like that. And I'll just do this back door area with it. Yeah, and just wait for that to dry. I'll just put a bit more on. You could wait for the bubbles to go down, but you don't really need to worry about it. Um, sometimes they sort of dry and give you a kind of feature, like a, a, a mark. But um, yeah, so we'll just leave that like that to go, to go off. Okay, so we'll put the cap back on there. So next up, you see I'm not washing it off in anything. Next up, I'll show you this wash. Now, these washes are quite intense. Um, so you wanna be careful about brushing them all over. So what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna do what's called a pin wash. And again, I'm gonna just check my brush, just dab it on some paper. You can't see what I'm doing here, can you? So I'm off camera. I'm just dabbing it on a piece of paper towel just to make sure it's not flooded. Because the last thing you want to do is touch them all and pff, away it goes. So I'll show you on, on this piece at the back here. If I just touch it on there, you can see that the wash, yeah, it's not going to do it, it doesn't want to play. The wash will go along the edge. There we go, you can see it going along there. Um, it's not too keen on going there and there because it's plastic, it, it wants something to cling to. So um, I'll just wipe that off. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just put some of this on the dashboard. I'll just touch it on around these these buttons and knobs here, and you can see the kind of effect you get with that. I'm trying to show you, you can see around those knobs. Now, if you look at that top button there, you can see that it's got a bit of a a splay off to one side. I'll show you how to clear that up in a minute. So I can just touch on there. Just put some on the column. And then I'm going to put some on the base of the column. And then put some around the edges of this panel. And in the edges of the gauges. Like so. And this is um, this has got a satin varnish on it, not flat. So just go on these door knobs here. Just pick up on these circles here. So there you can see that wash has gone on. Now this is quite difficult to show you because of all the camera angles. I'm going to bring the camera a bit closer. There we go. Now you can hopefully see in there, there's some light on it for you. You can hopefully see in there that what's happened is I've got the I've got a bit of a mess. Okay, now that's easy to clean up. All I'm gonna do is take a, a stiffer brush. I've got my odorless thinners here, and again what I forgot to say at the beginning. I'm just going to, with modeless thinners on the brush, I'm just going to, oh, that's got some um, something on it still. Filter by the look of it. So I'm just going to take the most of it off. And then what I can do is just go in here. This brush is no good at all for this. Um, I 
all these brushes have been used for washes and oils and stuff I don't ever mix my brushes up so I don't use brushes that are used for oils don't get used for acrylics and vice versa so now I can just go along with my thinners on the brush and like that bit on the top of that knob you should really leave this to dry for about 15 20 minutes before you do this but what you can do is just go over with the with the brush and remove the excess and just brush it away and move it around push it about and you'll end up with just having the wash in the areas where you want it I'm going to do this off camera guys because I need to look through my optivizer and I can't do that while I'm on film so I'll show you the effect after I've finished and there we go guys hopefully you can see that the um the dashboard now it's looking a bit more a little more sort of grimy a little bit used and all the detail has been accentuated accentuated with that black wash in the back so um there we go so that's that bit done now on the floury wash bit that's all dried now so I can get a cotton bud in fact I just use this one and I can go over the cotton bud and just wipe it off and it will just leave the wash in the nooks and crannies so you can see there if the camera will pick it up there's just some griminess in that leather stitching okay now if you compare that to what I'm going to do now with the black wash this is what I mean about this stuff being intense just touch this on here so I can just touch that along that stitching and the other beauty of all these washes as long as you don't use acrylics if you don't like it you just go and take it off Okay, so what I've done, I've put that just on the stitching. I'm also going to put a little bit along the top edge. So that it gets in behind and some around those, whatever those knobs are there. Oh, and there's a, there's a feature there in the bottom of the door panel, which I'm just going to pick up. There's a, like a rectangle of some sort. just brush that around like that there we go job done and now we could just touch on over those with cotton bird just to remove most of it and let it sit and let that go off for 10 minutes and then I'll come right, back. So the other thing we can do now is make our own wash with oils. So I've got some burnt umber here so I'm just going to take a tiny bit of this and I'm using it, it's a not good idea for mixing washes and stuff, an old Tamiya pot which I've cleaned out and just turning that upside down and I'm just going to put just literally that much, it's a tiniest tiniest little smear of the burnt umber which is a dark brown and then I'm going to get a tiny, tiny little piece, a little tiny little smear of black. Like so. So we've got a black and brown there. And this will just make like a dirty, dirty brown wash. And then what I'll do is I'll take some oil, some oil, some of my thinners. Just put that in there. You can see I've used quite a lot. And basically what we're doing here, we're not trying to make... Um, we're not trying to make a, a paint, we're trying to use dirty thinners. So just mix that up now in that thinners. And what you can see now is we've got a very, very, very thin stain almost. It's like dirty thinners, as I said. So you can see on there on the paper towel, it hardly makes a mark at all. So. Just come over to this side now because I've, I've done that side as I said we're going to go back to that in a minute so I'll come over to this side try and get the light in here for you it's now on impossible 
there's that no and then this is ridiculous i cannot get the light inside this body at all as i said the money i make on this channel from the advertising is going straight back into the channel and the first thing i'm doing is buying some decent lights there we go shows you that it's live anyway eh? not live but uh you know filmed live and i'm just going to brush this around the same as i did with the other one just brush this around because this is a brown i can afford to be a bit more loose with it get this down those door joints there around the handles and then around that rectangle at the bottom There we go, it's as simple as that. So that's all I've done is just brush that on. And I'll just leave that now and you'll see the effect. Now if you remember I said I'd put a filter on these seats. If I just come along now with a cotton bud and just wipe them over, you can see that I can easily remove. See this area here with the accentuated brown? Just rub it over the cotton bud. And I can take most of it away. And you can see these seats have taken on a kind of mottled look it's a lot more interesting than just a flat ordinary straight you know brown paint so what i can do now is come along with this wash and just brush this on over the top like so and what this will do it'll it'll stay in all the crevices and nooks and crannies if you remember i removed most of them I sanded this seat down well, the intention was to get rid of that false lookingness and you'll see that when that dries we will get the the realistic look we're looking for and a little tip I want to give you guys which works really well if you ever want to do leather paint your seats in like a, um, a semi gloss or semi matte finish or even a matte finish and then to get that leather look after the paint is dry give it a day or so so it's nice and tough especially if it's acrylic and rub your finger down the side of your nose where your skin is quite oily and then rub that onto the onto the seat and it will where you rub it it will bring up the luster of the paint it will come up a little bit shinier and it will look like leather. I learned that off a guy at, um, at Telford back in God, in the early 2000s and uh, he built, I'll tell you how long ago it was, the Fama would just come out and he built one on his stand and I asked how he did it, how he did the seats and that was what he'd done. He'd basically, he'd basically just um, just literally rubbed his nose, rub his finger down the side of his nose and rub that on. Now hopefully you can see down in here now that that oil, come on camera focus, there we go, that oil is stayed at all the edges and all the corners. Now I could probably do with a bit more black on those satchels because the colour I've got almost matches. So what I can do is take some of this black wash that I used earlier, this one, and I can just dip the brush in and add that to the middle of that and now I've got different shades I can play with and then I can just brush this on here like so and you can see because it's already wet it behaves differently than when it's dry and you can see there that oil is rushing into all the corners and nooks and crannies I want to get those circular parts at the top, get them accentuated. A little bit in the door handles there. There we go. So you can see there the difference in the, on one side we've got the brown. Yeah, and I've just added the black to the satchels. And on the other side, in there we've got the black. 
So you can see it's a lot more subtle on this side than it is on that side. So we'll let that dry for a few minutes. Then I'll come back and show you what I do. Okay, so a slight camera angle change trying to make this better for you guys to see. Um, so what I've got here is a brush just covered in thinners. And if you look on this satchel at the back, there's an area here just underneath where the brush is now. I'm just going to rub over that. God, this is difficult on camera. I'm just going to rub over that and just remove the wash from that area above it. And what you'll do then is you can blend it and you can blend the wash out so that it fades away. So you can see now on the top of that area above that satchel, the wash is faded away. Yeah. So really I should be doing this on something flat, so like, it's like on a tank or on the outside of the car or something, but trying to get the camera to look inside and with the light and everything is difficult. On the front, where it was um, where it was black, I've gone round and I've just, all I'm doing is just with the brush like this, let's try and get this so you can see it, like this, just rub away so you can remove the wash with the thinners on the brush and then you can blend it out. You can see there I'm blending it away. Come on camera focus. Blending it away. For those of you that don't make videos, right now my thumb, which is holding the side of the car, is about a centimetre away from the phone. And I'm trying to look around the left hand side of the phone while I do this. <laughs> and I'm inside the car. So uh, yeah, not easy. But there you go. Uh, I'm going to, it's pointless trying to do this on camera. Um, if you want to know more about washes and stuff, then just leave a message and I'll try and show you more in the, in another video. And there we go guys. Now there's the, that's the inside of the car all done. You can see the washes on the dashboard, the washes in the sides, and the washes on the leather. And all I've done off camera, I've gone round and like you saw me doing with the thinner and just removing it. Now the camera accentuates everything so in real life it doesn't look anything like as garish as it does on there like down here at the bottom of this door I can barely see the colour change whereas on the camera it's like a huge shadow. But that's okay because once it's down in there and all hidden the roof's on and everything you want it to be a bit OTT. So what I'm going to do now I just want to highlight the stitching and the edging on the leather. So what I've got is a um, a tin of Humbrol 68 I think it is and it's a it's a very light brown color and all I'm doing is putting some on an old brush and then so you can see what I'm doing wiping it off so there's next to nothing left on the brush it's literally you know almost like cleaning the brush but without without using anything to clean it with no thinners if you like and then all I'm going to do is just very lightly brush over the leather so that it just picks up the detail. Okay. As you can see, even though I've practically cleaned the brush right off, there's still quite a bit on there. I'm just very gently brushing over the satchels, if that's what we're going to call them. I'm just picking up the detail on them because I want them to sort of pop, if you like, so that when they're, when you look at it inside the car, they kind of just pop a little bit. Now the seats, remember I put a, a wash on them and you can see that the the actual wash has got into all the, the texture of the seat and again I'm just going to use this same colour and just very gently dry brush over the seat just to highlight the creases and stuff and the raised bits and the corners and you can see it's a very very subtle difference but it's a difference nonetheless okay so I'll just carry on doing this and I'll be back in a second and there we go guys that's it dry brushing done 
on those satchels. You can see that there. Come on camera focus please. There we go. So you can see that in there. Wash is done. Dashboard's looking okay. So there we are and then there's the seats. Seats are done. Not looking lovely. Back seat there. I think I removed a little bit too much detail on the seat but hey ho. I'm probably going to be doing this with the roof up anyway, so it doesn't really make a lot of difference. And I also, while I was there, very light dry brushing on the on the floor just to, you know, show some dirt. This being a, um, a general staff car, I think it probably would have been kept in very good condition. I'm assuming the, you know, the driver would have been taking the general to meetings and stuff. And whenever there was an opportunity, he probably was cleaning the car and um, cleaning the inside out, I should imagine. Um, so anyway... So there we go, next thing now is to get the seats in and get the body on. Just one more tip guys, um, I should have thought of this while I was actually doing it. If you're using enamel washes um, or enamel thinners or enamel paints or whatever, make sure your, your rags and stuff that you've used, don't just put them in an ordinary bin. Um, they stink to high heaven and they stink for days and days. I mean that reeks. So you know, put it straight out of the waste paper or the recycling or whatever, some outside. Um, it's the best way to offend your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, housemate, whatever, um, whoever you live with. It's the best way to offend them. It's a disgusting smell, in my opinion, and it just, it reeks um, and it just lingers. So, uh, yeah, throw it straight out in the bin. Right, so we'll go back to stage three of the instructions now, and we can see that we've got the seats assembled. And we've got to fit them into the floor pan now. So what I'm going to do is, with the back seat, it's a very tight fit, so that's good. The front seats, they've got holes that go right through. So what we can actually do is put the seats in place and then glue them from behind. And then touch up the paint afterwards if we need to. But what I'm going to do, just glue will work on painted areas um, with acrylic paint. It will work because it will attack the paint. But what I'm going to do, just to give it a bit of a an easy ride just either side of the holes here I'm just gonna scratch the paint up to get through to the plastic and it'll just make sure because the last thing you want is those seats to start falling out you know when you start holding the model upside down for painting and whatever so there we go so that's that done so what I can do now I've got my um this is actually plastic weld you can use Tamiya extra thin and any liquid cement so what I'm going to do is just place my seat in. One of these seats has got a chip on it on the back. I can't even see the chip now. Yeah, there we go. See, it's got a little chip in it there. So I want to make sure that that goes to the outside so that it can't be seen. So I'm just going to locate that seat in there. In those holes. And then just give it a gentle nudge down. That hole needs to be opened up a bit, so what I can do now is just use the tip of the knife. This is handy because it will also help with the gluing. Just give that one a little tweak as well. And there we go. So the other thing I think I'll do is just give these a, a very quick scrape on the bottom. So I can just put that in now, hold it in place, and then come in from underneath, and put a drop of glue in there, and a drop of glue in there, and then that will be it. And you can see on there, I hope, that you can see the glue has gone underneath the seat. So that will hold it in place there, nice and solid now. And then the other one. Yeah, and those holes don't need opening up, so they're fine. So I can come along, hold that with my finger, turn it over, drop a glue in that hole, drop a glue in that hole. This is one of the other beauties of liquid cement, you see, it uh, makes it so easy to use. And then you can see there, I don't need to do any touching up or anything around those seats, they look absolutely fine. And then when we look underneath, I don't need to do any touching up under there either, because that's what the glue's done. It's carried the, it's melted the paint and carried the paint over the pins. So 
that's all fine. I might could perhaps do a little touch up in there, but hey, I'll probably give it a wash and make it dirty underneath anyway. And then the rear seat, I did try this just now just to make sure it fits and it is a very tight fit. So that's going to go in like that. There's a ledge on the bottom there. We're going to make sure it goes up against that ledge and then push it back down in. But I want to make sure the front floor is down. You've got to be careful here not to damage anything underneath. So you're squeezing it. Be careful not to uh, damage anything underneath. And I think that's it. Or maybe it sits on top of that ledge. No, nope, it sits down in front of it. Just like that. So then the back, let's squeeze down. The front tries to lift. Yeah, so I think that's it. Before I glue it, I'm just going to try the body. Need to be careful of those. That, that rail in the middle, that will actually uh, break if you give it too much jip. Um, Yeah, I'm going to put some glue on that seat because I think once this body goes on now, that's going to be it. I'm not going to be able to take it off again because it's going to break. So I'm just going to put a dab of glue in there, a dab of glue in there. That should be enough. I don't really need to glue it, I don't think, but um, because it's wedged in there so tight. There we go. It's down on the front, down on the back. Everything's in. The glue kind of, when it gets in the paint, it kind of almost acts like a bit of a lubricant and helps it slip into place. So there we go. That's that all done. So what I'll do is just to make sure it stays down on the front, I'll put a drop of glue there and a drop of glue there. And that's it. You can see if you just touch it, there'd be no touch up required. You could just, it won't affect the paint at all. But it will where the join is because it stays in there and stays wet for longer. Okay, so now I can push this body down over these seats. And there we go. Just like that. And we can see the rear seat just shows up through there. That's all fine. Body's gone down, holes in the front have gone in, and that's that. And there we go. And that's actually, it has actually broken away on this side. You can see down in there, it's broken away. So I'm going to have to take the body off and re glue that. But um, yeah, it's a bit strange actually because the way it's designed, the seat backs actually push that off so this piece here this piece this this piece that, that actually supports the uh, glass in the center is the biggest pain of this whole model um, it really has been extremely troublesome it was tro troublesome to fit it was troublesome to clean up and it's been it's broken away two or three times and I'm absolutely at my wits end with it and It's just been a real pain. So I'm gonna get some of my quick setting. Give it a touch in there. That'll glue that and set it quickly. That's what I need to try to do is get it to bow backwards if it's gonna bow at all. Um, so that it doesn't hit those seats. But it seems like the, the back of the seat rails here are actually interfering with it. That's what's actually broken. So let's try and put it together again without breaking anything. Probably would be advisable to um, to leave it until the end. There we 
to go. So that's stayed in place now. Yeah, if I were you, if you're building this, I would leave leave this piece out and fit it now. Rather, well, after the body's put together. So how are we going to get this body to clamp up together? So we need to get, make sure those holes go in there in the front weight fenders. And then we're going to get a rubber band. Put a rubber band around and over the bonnet to hold it down. Sorry if you're American, bonnet is hood and the front wings are the fenders. Ah. There we go, so that's held down either side there. You can see there's, there's no gap, it's just a lovely fit. Now the back needs a bit of a nudge. The back's got to go down and around this rear part of the floor. So that needs clamping there. So you can see that if I clamp it there between the fuel tack and the back, it closes up that gap around the wheel arches, almost. So what I think I'll do is get a couple of my big clamps. Let's see if I can do this without breaking anything. Notice I'm doing all the clamping before I'm gluing, guys. If I glue and then clamp, you get it oozing out everywhere, which I say in all my videos. So that's that clamp down on that side. It's not as good a fit as the front, but it's it's on there. And then the other side. The other side is fitting with that clamp. So what I'll probably do is move this clamp to the side a bit if I can. Hmm, how am I going to do this? I need to put something across there. So I think what I'll do is get a metal bar like that and then clamp it on the metal bar like that and that won't break the bodywork then and just make sure it's not clamping on the seat and there we go so that's clamped down there now this side the fit isn't perfect but it's good enough to glue it, I think So there we go, that's the body now clamped on. So what we've got to do now is take some of our plastic weld. I think what I might do is put a clothes pad on there. Just to pull that in. That's a bit better. We'll do the same on the other side just to balance it out. Oops. Okay, so that's that done. Okay, so we've got no gaps at all now. So what I'm going to do now is take some of my plastic weld, put some in there, some in there, oops, this capillary down the chassis rail there, did you see that? And it's done the same on that side. That's okay because it's gluing the floor if it's doing that. There we go there. I'm just going to put some in there like that. You can see, guys, that if I touch it in the area where there's paint, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so that's it glued to the floor. That could do with being clamped in there, I think. I think I'll put a rubber band around that. Let's get a little rubber band, one of these reddish ones, I'll come in tomorrow and it'll be gone, split flown across the room. Careful not to break the exhaust or the steering column or the seats or anything that's sticking out. That should help to hold that in, so I can just put a dab of glue on there now. So that's just holding the body and just pinching it in here. Now then, these fenders, what I need to do here, shut up compressor, 
Uh, um, I just need to put some glue in the back here. Some glue in the back there. If you're thinking, wow, he's putting lots of glue on there, you're right, it's because I need to make sure that this doesn't move after all the clamps come off. And the only thing I'm hoping and praying that I can't really check at the moment is it's not twisting the chassis. If it is, I'll have to do some remedial work to the suspension, but that way you guys get to see what I do. And I'm just going to put a touch of glue in there. And a touch in there. Some there. Some there. I'm kind of hoping it's going to capillary around, but it's not. So I'm probably going to have to put some glue in there. So I'm going to go off camera now, guys, and we'll call that a day for this part. Um, so what have we covered here? We've covered some weathering, oily washes, uh, a bit of dry brushing, instrument panel. So I'm just going to, um, all I'm going to do now is put some glue on here, go around the bodywork and just make sure it's all glued and looking good. And uh, it's all going to stay together. And um, and that's that. In part 11, we'll be starting to pretty much finish her off, I think. I'll show you how I do the lights and everything, and uh, we'll go from there. That's that. So I'm just going to put a drop of glue in here. And once again, you see, like I said, you've got these holes on the back. So I'm going to quickly take the peg off. Whoops. Put a drop of glue in there and then put the peg back on quickly. Same on this side. Drop a glue in there, put the peg back on quickly. I'm just going to um, something else I'll show you in the next video is how we get rid of these seam lines around here. So I think that's going to do us. I think that's enough. So there we go. You can see it's actually starting like a car now instead of a box of bits. So uh, yeah, it looks good inside, doesn't she? For a, what is it, 50 year old Airfix kit? It's not so bad, eh? <laughs> right, I'll see you later. Bye bye.